Alrighty, friends, this is going to be an information heavy video. Um, I will put as much as I can on the screen and of course link as much as I can in the description box down below. So let's get started. Starting off with my Holy Grail markers, the Zebra Mild Liners. I use these in pretty much every single journal spread, um, specifically these four colors. Uh, they have two sides to them, so one side is more of like a wide tip highlighter and then the other is more of a pointy tip um, that I use to either write out titles or do more smaller doodles. Next up is my Pigma Micron with the plastic nib. I find this to be probably my favorite of all the Pigma Micron pens because of how durable the plastic nib is. I tend to press somewhat hard when I'm writing or drawing, so I want a nib that will kind of support <laughs> the strength of how I write. Next up, we have the Muji Fineliner in the size 0.38. This is for extremely small text or doodles, um, but definitely an amazing go-to. They have a bunch of other sizes as well. Next up is the Sharpie S Gel Pen, aka the definitely takes a long time to dry, so don't touch it or it will smudge pen. It is definitely the blackest pen that I own, and it is super great for doing more thicker designs as opposed to the fine liner. Next up, we have my favorite pen of all time. This is the pen that I will continuously buy packs and packs of because it is just fabulous. It is the Ritek Up Gel pen in the size 0.5. It dries super quickly, it is comfortable to hold, it's super pigmented, and it's just an amazing pen. Anytime I need to do any kind of metallic accents or text, I use the Uniball Signo in gold. Again, super pigmented, an oldie but a goodie, a trustworthy pen. I mean, not much really needs to be said, it's just a really great metallic pen. <laughs> I use the Tombow Fudenosuke pens whenever I need to do some kind of calligraphy or cursive title. There are two different kinds of Fudenosuke pens. There's one that has like a more flexible tip and one with a more firm tip. Personally, I feel like I get more precise calligraphy out of the flexible tip, but the options are there. The final pen for this section is the Sakura White Jelly Roll pen in either the size 0.8 or 0.10, depending on how uh, detailed I want to get with either the doodles or text. Alrighty, the final supplies in this section are definitely no stranger to anyone that bullet journals or just journals in general. These are the Tombow Dual Brush Pens. There is a brush tip on one side and then a more defined pointy tip on the other side. These pens are definitely amazing starter options for anyone getting into bullet journaling and it just comes in a variety of different colors. So definitely one of my favorites. So I think we kind of all saw this section coming. Um, nonetheless, this will be pretty short and sweet. I'm not going to go super in-depth into each individual washi tape because I think you can kind of get the gist of what they are based on what you see, but I'm going to give just a general overview of my washi tape collection. So I normally have either like super thick washi tape, super thin, or just like the general thickness of most washi tape. I try to have some kind of variety when it comes to my washi tape collection, but it generally just ends up defaulting to super neutral, simple patterns or colors. Let me know if you guys will be down to see an entire video dedicated to my washi tape collection. I feel like that'd be fun to do. I don't know. Let me know. Alrighty, we've made it to the shortest section of this entire video. Um, just wanted to quickly show you what I use for my gluing needs as well as my corner cutting needs. Um, very self-explanatory tools, but these are my go-tos. 
Ah, well, if there was one collection that was as big, if not bigger, than my washi tape collection, it's definitely my stamp collection. Funnily enough, though, I realistically only use, like, between five to ten different stamps. The other ones I kind of just have in case of emergency or in case I need a very specific stamp for a uh, certain theme. Generally, the stamps I own are more geared towards either journaling or have some kind of nature aspect to them. My most used stamps, however, are definitely these alphabet stamps from Amazon. These are my go-tos whenever I need to create titles of some kind. And then for no reason whatsoever, I have this gigantic stamp, which I never seem to use properly. Alrighty, next up is the paper ephemera section. Now, a majority of these do come from Amazon. Uh, the other pages are mainly just pieces that I've hoarded from years of bullet journaling. Essentially, these pieces are what I use to do a majority of the layering techniques in my journaling spreads. Um, I get some questions about how I go about layering, I guess, is that, would that be a cool video? I don't know. I feel like it's hard to explain what I'm doing because a majority of it is just like what comes to mind. But if you want more of a specific how-to, I can definitely try to come up with a video for that. Again, let me know. Moving on to a favorite uh, topic of mine to discuss, stickers. Uh, <laughs> again, I've kind of been accumulating stickers since I started bullet journaling, but I quickly just wanted to show you how I go about storing both sticker sheets as well as individual stickers. And I also wanted to showcase some of my favorite small businesses to shop from when it comes to sticker sheets and stationery. Using stickers in your journal is another great way to add some kind of layering or, oh, uh, you're not, you're not supposed to be seeing that. <laughs> Uh, starting off with a quick shameless plug uh, for my own stationery shop where I sell a bunch of stickers and stationery. Besides my shop, however, here are some other small businesses that I really enjoy buying stickers from. Of course, I will include the links to all of these shops in the description box down below. Alrighty, so we've made it to the final section of this video and probably the most important I think I should have talked about this in the beginning of the video, but I guess I'm just saving the best for last. So I started journaling in 2018 and since then I feel like I've gotten a pretty good idea of the kinds of notebooks that I enjoy journaling in. My go-to brands for notebooks are definitely Archer and Olive, Shop Amanda Rachley, and Your Bujo. I think it was my 2020 bullet journal where I used the blackout book from Archer and Olive and holy cow that was that was a challenge <laughs> it was difficult to do an entire yearly setup on just black pages but I kind of miss it and I kind of want to do it for next year's bullet journal I think I'm ready for a challenge so we'll see if that ends up happening some honorable mentions when it comes to my other non-bullet journaling related journals uh, are definitely my spiral notebooks and my leather bound books. I don't really use these too often, but I wanted to give other kind of journaling recommendations besides just the standard bullet journal ones. I love the spiral notebooks because it basically just reminds me of school and taking notes in class because yes, I was one of those who tried very hard to make my notes look aesthetically pleasing, which shouldn't be a surprise at this point. And of course, my leather journals because, well, it really just wouldn't be a journal recommendation section without at least showing you a few. <laughs>
Alrighty friends, we have reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching me put this journaling spread together using my favorite stationary items. I hope this video was helpful and I was able to provide some kind of recommendations for your journaling needs. If you have any requests for stationary related videos in the future, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!